Hi, uh, welcome to this lab module. In this lab module, we will be talking about uh, uh, fabricated sensor on silicon substrate uh, with gold deposition, interdiction electrodes and micro heaters. So, how can we uh, fabricate uh, the uh, material on a silicon substrate? Now, I told you substrate does not confined to only silicon. Substrate can be glass, substrate can be polymer. In principle, substrate can be any material on which you are growing a device or you are fabricating a device. All right. So, uh, if I talk about uh, silicon as a substrate and I talk about uh, gold depositions, interdiction electrodes and micro heater, then what I am talking about? First, we have to deposit a metal and metal would be nichrome or platinum. So, if, if you see the screen what we are talking about is if you take an uh, silicon wafer. Now, all of you are kind of uh, expert in understanding the process flow. So, I am not going in detail of the process flow, but if you have silicon wafer and if you oxidize this silicon wafer right, then this is called oxidized silicon wafer. This oxidation can be done using thermal oxidation right SiO2, SiO2 this is silicon. Now, on this you need to form a heater. So, how can you form the heater? You can form heater by depositing a metal and then uh, uh, performing lithography. So, if I deposit a metal and perform lithography, I will have my heater material as shown in figure and this one would be let us say platinum alright. Now, on this how can I have uh, uh, interdigital electrodes? Uh, so, if I directly deposit interdigital electrodes or fabricate interdigitated inter electrodes IDEs right, you know IDEs looks like this finger electrodes hmm, like this. So, if I want to deposit and fabricate IDEs right, how can I uh, uh, use that and these IDEs are made up of gold right. We always say chrome gold because chrome would be helping in the addition of gold. So, I, if I deposit metal on metal it will short. So, I have to deposit an insulating material and then perform lithography to open the window. Window is only for contact pads here right contact pads contact pads. Now, on this if I deposit a metal which is my chrome gold right. If I deposit a metal which is chrome gold and I pattern it then I will have my interdigitated electrodes right. Why I am depositing metal on metal here because this is a contact pads. Contact pads thicker the contact pad better it is because it will have a ohmic contact versus rectifying contact. So, how to create this kind of uh, uh, platform or how to create this kind of uh, device this is what will be taught or will be shown to you in the lab class and I will request uh, my teaching assistant Anil to show it to you uh, uh, this particular lab uh, component of this subject. So, till then you take care and I will request Anil to please take it over. Welcome. So, uh, what we are doing uh, from past few small small modules is that we are trying to see uh, actually fabricated sensors and how they are working, what is the uh, rationale uh, behind uh, the design that has been employed for them and uh, uh, such things. Okay. And uh, now, uh, last few two modules you have seen devices that were fabricated on glass substrate correct and uh, you have seen microfluidic channel based devices and uh, you have seen micro heaters and microfluidics combined. So, such devices you have seen. Now, we will see few devices that have been fabricated on uh, silicon wafers ok. Uh, majority of the devices would be on silicon wafer and uh, a few microfluidic devices are mainly done on glass wafers ok generally. Now, uh, as I told you before you make any any device you clean you have to clean the wafer uh, as professor would have told you uh, you clean the wafer then you deposit a specific material especially uh, sensing materials like electrical sensors mostly we use some metal so like, like you may you, you might use platinum you might use gold you might use aluminum. So, different uh, you might use nickel you might use nichrome for micro heater. So, many different types of uh, many different types of made, uh, metals may be deposited on silicon wafer. So, to start off I will show you a silicon wafer where a blanket deposition of gold has been done. So, this is a silicon wafer 
with gold deposit on it. You can see how smooth the surface is. You can see the amount of reflection from it. You can see the uh, gold. Um, I can see the gold reflecting on the camera itself and creating light. The light falling from the top is reflecting from the gold and uh, going onto the camera. So uh, this is gold deposited, blanket deposited gold on silicon wafer. The silicon wafer's thickness is, so if I come to the parameters of deposition, so this has been deposited, yeah, so such gold material can be deposited using either sputtering method or e-beam evaporation method, okay. So in sputtering as you know, there will be a target and uh, the uh, gold will be like it's a very active process where uh, actively the gold atoms will be bombarded by argon atoms and the gold atoms will be taken out from the target and they will be deposited onto the substrate this is our substrate that is sputtering and another method of depositing gold is e-beam evaporation which is a more tender method uh, where electron beams uh, do the process in a vacuum environment and deposit gold okay so this has been deposited using e-beam evaporation now how much thickness of gold is there so this has actually 195 nanometer of gold and below that 195 nanometer of gold you have 25 nanometer of chrome why is chrome used chrome is used for better so gold by default has very less addition or stiction or attachment to the silicon substrate so to improve the addition so you might have learned this in the theory classes so we are just showing it to you so to improve this addition of gold onto the silicon substrate we use a 25 nanometer layer of chrome so first we take the silicon wafer then we will deposit 25 nanometer of chrome and then we will deposit 195 nanometer of gold. Now people even deposit higher thicknesses of gold. They can go up to 400 nanometer, 500 nanometer. But when you do that, what you have to take, in, take into account is that as you increase the thickness of gold that you deposit on silicon, the stiction, the addition of that gold layers will be reducing as and when the thickness goes up because the effect of chrome, chrome's pull on gold will be lesser as the thickness goes up. On top of that, material cost is something else that you should be worried about. So we have done this deposition using a central facility in the campus in IIC. There, there are constraints that if you are depositing gold or platinum or such precious metals, you cannot cross 200 nanometers. You cannot deposit more than 200 nanometers because you are paying a definite amount for the material, right? If you just deposit 500 nanometer of gold, it's a lot of material and it's expensive. So they have put this rule. So that is so then uh, so that is the process constraint. So whenever in life or especially in engineering or technology, uh, you will always have process constraints. Like you are trying to make a system. This is a course in sensors and actuators, right? Uh, making a sensor or an actuator is one part, but for that sensor or actuator to be useful to a, a real world scenario, it has to be packaged into a system, correct? Now, you are trying to make a system. Let us say you have, uh, you are integrating the sensor into a system and you have uh, packaging in that and uh, you are make, making metal parts for doing that. Now, metal machining you, you will do from outside, let us say. You have found 3-4 vendors who do specific machining and you want specific feature size on that metal. Now your process, your design will be defined by the minimum feature size that the vendor can provide for you. Accordingly, so before you design only because there is no point in doing a wonderful design of extremely nice features which you cannot fabricate. So first thing that you have to do is be practical and especially when you are into product development, be, be practical and you have to make a reasonable judgment or a uh, what do you call that uh, trade off yeah you, you should make a trade off between your available resources and technologies and the design that you want so first thing you do is you will have a rough idea of your design in your mind then you will go to the vendors that will do it for you okay you ask them like what is the minimum minimum feature sizes what are the minimum cutting that you can do what are the minimum dimensions that you can uh, work with Accordingly, they will give you the parameters that they can work with. Using those parameters, you go ahead and make your design. That is how you do the product development design. Then you do these parts, individual parts, okay? And then you assemble them together, in integrated with your sensor to make the product. Likewise, this 200 nanometer constraint on gold is also a process constraint. You are using one equipment, okay, in a central facility and where there are rules. So you have to follow those rules and you make your devices. So you accordingly you tune your device constraints, you tune your resistance calculations if you are making a micro heater uh, accordingly and then do your design accordingly. So that is the whole point. So we have a gold deposited 4 inch silicon wafer. The wafer thickness is 500 microns or 0.5 mm wafer and the deposited gold is 195 nanometer of gold.
by 25 nanometer of chrome okay this is one silicon wafer okay now next thing what we do is we pattern on this and make our sensors correct now the sensor that i am going to show you uh, we have fabricated using platinum i am showing you gold because uh, right now this is available to you uh, available to us to show it to you uh, the sensors can be fabricated on gold also why we choose different materials is depending on the design constraints again so gold will have a very good conductivity uh, platinum will have good conductivity as also we have thermal properties or a thermal coefficient uh, conduction coefficient that will be different between uh, platinum and gold so platinum can also be used as a micro heater gold doesn't perform that well as a micro heater because gold's conductivity is extremely high that it cannot dissipate heat the efficiency is more so people don't use gold as micro heaters but platinum people use nichrome anyway is a very standard material for micro heater when you are using platinum you can use platinum for as both the micro heater as well as a uh, electrode structure ide structure that's the advantage of platinum so when we have a design where there is a micro heater and an electrode structure together integrated into one design we would prefer to go with platinum this is how we would prefer to go with platinum this is how you make material choices in your sensor design so like what material to use uh, how many layers of material to be put uh, all those things uh, and how much should be the feature size so feature size again comes from the thickness that you deposit how because uh, resistance so thick let's say you are de designing a micro heater okay so you make a micro heater like this like a uh, winding structure will be there you make it okay just i'm showing in my hand just making a winding structure you make a micro heater and now uh, you how do you design your design is that now this much resistance should be there in the micro heater when this when this much resistance is there i apply a voltage this much current will flow through that resistance and there will be i squared r losses this i squared r losses will be dissipated as heat so mcp dt so mcp dt cp is a specific heat of capacity specific heat capacity of the material m is a mass of the material so i squared r is equal to mcp dt okay roughly so dt will be the temperature change that you get so this is how you mathematically uh, formulate your micro heater now what is the resistance if you are making a micro heater resistance is as you know is rho l by a rho is the resistivity l is the length of the material and a is the area of cross section correct i am trying to tell you how the thickness that you deposit comes into play okay so resistivity is rho l by a correct now resistivity uh, i mean resistance is rho l by a where rho is resistivity Uh, resistivity of a material is constant you cannot change it so your length you define by the winding pattern that you put on the micro heater now how does a get affected a is the cross sectional area correct now if you deposit a higher thickness of the material your cross section area will increase correct rho l by a a will increase that means when a increases because it's an inverse relationship because r is equal to rho l by a when a increases r reduces so that means for a given 2d design of the winding structure of your micro heater i again repeat for the given two dimensional design of the winding structure of your micro heater if you increase the thickness of the deposited layer of your metal your resistance comes down that means for you to attain a particular temperature using your micro heater it becomes even more difficult that or you have to apply a even higher voltage to a thick to a thicker layer as compared to a thinner layer so if you want to attain very high temperatures it's good to have a thinner layer of the material because a will be less so these are the trade offs but then if you have a thicker layer of material uh, if you are looking at an electrode a thicker layer of material makes sense because resistance its inherent resistance will be low if you are looking at an electrode the electrode should be able to sense the impedance or the resistance of the substance that is on top of it correct the electrode should be able to sense the impedance or the resistivity or the resistance of the substance that is on top of it when you are measuring such a property the the inherent resistance of the electrode itself should be as low as possible correct that should be as low as possible if that is the case your resistance should be less correct then it makes sense to have a higher area so rho l by a if you make it higher a then resistance will be less so for electrodes for interdigitated electrode structures as you might have seen in the lectures for ides it is good to have a thicker uh, material so now you have seen two cases if you are making a micro heater you understood that it is good to have a thinner 
um, thinner deposited metal layer. If you are making an IDE structure, it is good to have a thicker material layer. Okay. But what if your design or a sensor has both these things? You have an electrode and a microheater in your in your sensor. I will show you one such sensor that we have made. So in that case, you go a midway, somewhere in between the thickness will be. So it will not be too low, it will not be too high, it will be somewhere in between. That is what we have done uh, with platinum and titanium. So we have made one sensor like that. Uh, in next module, I will show you such a sensor. So I think you understood what I have told you right now. We have shown you how a wafer which is have been deposited with blanket deposit with metal looks like. Uh, what, what is the design constraint? How much thickness of the metal was deposited? Uh, why, what is the requirement for a stiction layer or an addition layer? What materials will be used? And what is the design approach if you are making a microheater? And how it is different when you are trying to make an interdigitated electrode? Okay, so with these ideas in mind, we will look at a sensor that we have made in our lab where both these structures coexist and how we have designed them. I will show you under the microscope how they look like. Okay. So that we will see in the next module. Thank you.